which book will be made into a movie next, do you think? I'd really like to make a holiday special for television that's animated. Uh, the trouble with these actors who are in middle school is that they grow very quickly and they change very quickly. I want to welcome Jeff Kenny, who is the author of the children's book series Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which is made up of six books. He has another one coming uh, in the fall. He's also a writer and a designer of online games. Sure. You're a busy guy, Jeff Kenny. I am a little bit too busy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and you have this movie coming out now, uh, the new movie Diary of a Wimpy Kid Dog Days. This is the third film. That's right. In the Wimpy Kid film series, and it's based on your third and fourth book. Yes, it's getting very confusing. My fourth book is called Dog Days, and the third movie is called Dog Days, but we wanted to make a summer movie for once, and just to take the kids out of the school setting and put them in the outdoors, put them at the pool, on the golf course, you know, <laughs> on the boardwalk, anything that a kid might do in the summertime, uh, we, you know, we put them out in that setting. It was a lot of fun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And what's great about this is the plot. The plot is basically about the main character, Greg Heffley, uh, who has his plans for the summer ruined. It's quite comical. And the, the, the big question now is how is the movie different from the books? It's different in a lot of ways, actually. You know, one of the things that we wanted to do is to surprise the readers of the books because a lot of kids read these books again and again. And if we just serve them up the same story that they've already read, they right. wouldn't feel very satisfied. Uh, the other part of it is the emotional part. Uh, in my books, I'm just running a series of gags, trying to get a laugh on every page. But in a movie, you really have to deliver something different to the audience. The audience comes in with an expectation that they're going to feel something. And so that's something I think the movies do very well. And you are very involved in the movie. In fact, you're the executive producer of the movie, which is quite different than a lot of authors who end up being consultants on the film. Why was it important for you to do that? I really wanted to, to, to preserve the tone of my books. I wanted to make sure that the characters acted like the characters in the books. And to do that, I felt like I had to be on the staff, if you will. So I stayed on as executive producer, and I was there from the very early days of shaping the plot of each movie all the way through filming uh, to marketing and, and post-production. Uh, so I, was, I really had complete experience for an author. And when you watch your films, uh, it's just one of the big questions is always, how much of this is really based on Jeff's life? I mean, it's called <laughs> realistic fiction. Right. But at the same time, you talk about your own childhood and you say that there are a lot of funny things that happened in your childhood. Uh, how much of it is your life? I think I'd like to say that a lot of my childhood DNA is in these movies. You know, my frame of reference for my childhood is, of course, you know, what I experienced and what I lived. So many of the things that Greg goes through, I went through as a child. Uh, and usually, just when you're writing about a normal childhood, uh, you would think that that wouldn't necessarily, every childhood wouldn't be worthy of an entire book. But you say that there are so many funny things that happen to young people that there's probably a book in every single childhood. I think so. I look at other kids and I, I feel jealous of them because they have so many stories that they have that I don't know. You know, I feel like I've sort of tapped out my own experiences. So now I'm looking <laughs> to my own kids and to other kids to get more ideas. Uh, the book is, re is actually rated PG. That's right. Uh, because it has some rude humor. That's what yeah. they call it. Rude? I don't know if I'd go there. I'd say <laughs> juvenile humor. Some juvenile humor. I know all the young people that have watched this book uh, grow and this whole series grow are eager to see this movie. Uh, what new audiences are you trying to break into? I think that we're trying to attract uh, more girls. I think, you know, Diary of a Wimpy Kid is about a friendship between two boys. Uh, so we have Peyton List, who, who plays Holly Hills, who's an excellent actress and very pretty, and she's going to draw in more girls, I think. And there's also uh, Devin Bostic, uh, who plays Roderick, is I think somewhat of a teen idol now. So uh, I think that's how we're getting the girls in the doors. Okay, and she, her character is almost kind of a tough girl, because I remember she hit the ball. Oh, and that's playing tennis, or who, which character was that? That's Patty Farrell, who's played by a uh, Canadian actress named Lane McNeil. And she took this character who only has about two pages in mention in my books, and she uh, made her into this fleshed out character. Uh, she did a great job. 
when you look from a business standpoint, does the movie help the book series or does the book series help the movie more? That's a good question. I think they're sort of symbiotic, I guess. They, they, they feed off of each other and you know, what's happened in the past few years is I've had a movie come out and then a book and then a movie and a book. And that's been a lot of fun. I think it keeps a uh, wimpy kid in people's minds and it keeps this whole thing going. Uh, you're a busy guy because you actually design online games, as I mentioned. You're, you're working full time. How does that help you, uh, being a designer of online games in uh, this business? Well, I created this website called Pop Tropica, which is a giant virtual world for kids. And there's a huge audience there. I think we get sometimes 10 million kids a month. And uh, it's just great to, to be able to reach that many kids between my day job and you know my side project in writing and working on the movies. Uh, I feel like I, I reach like 95% of the kids of, of a certain age in America. So that's a, a privilege, I think. Uh, you're a lot older than your audience. You're, you look <laughs> young, but you're still older than your audience. Uh, how are you able to, to stay connected to the young people and to anticipate what they're going to find to be humorous? I think you probably blame it on Arrested Development. Uh, you know, I have a child's taste in some ways. I like the things that kids like, like the same foods and, you know, junk cereal and things like that and, and a lot of uh, kids' entertainment. So I think I've, I've, I've managed to stay young through that. Okay. Do you also talk to young people about their lives and what they'd like to see? Yeah. I'm actually a, a, a Cub Scout leader, so I, so I have a lot of... Um, you know, kids around who I lead in the in the den and at the club uh, at the pack level. Uh, so yeah, I'm always uh, I'm kind of I've always got kids in my life in some way. Um, it's been a really long road for you. Uh, you started uh, this series and it was only available uh, online in 2004. By 2007, it had received 20 million views. Uh, was that a strategic move to keep it online first and then to grow it from there, or why did you start online? I was a frustrated cartoonist. I wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist, but I couldn't get anybody to publish my work. And then when the internet uh, came into full bloom, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I can, I can create something and get it right to my audience without a gatekeeper. So that was a big moment. In fact, it was such a big moment that I, I circled that day on the calendar when I realized it because I knew my life had changed. And so I started publishing online and then I I found a uh, book publisher to sort of legitimize the work in a way. How else did it help you that you already had built in this big following of people when the book came out? I think it gave me confidence uh, because I was reaching a lot of kids, millions of kids, and also it taught me what worked and what didn't. Um, you know, I got a lot of feedback from people from all over the world who told me what they were reading and what they liked, and so it helped me to figure out what the best material was for the actual book version. I think in a way, um, it, it, the, the clunkiness of the online reading experience really helped me because I had 1,300 pages online and I think even a kid might read a few pages and say, okay, I like it, but enough. I'm not going to sit here in front of a computer screen and read it. Uh, this was before we had portable readers. Um, so I think that that actually helped me to, to move into books. How much control do you keep? I mean, you, you're the executive pro producer of the film. Uh, but when you moved into this domain, did you start to worry that potentially you would lose the creative control that made it such a success in the first place? I think that when you enter into this world, into uh, the world of filmmaking, you have to understand uh, that it's a collaborative world. You know, nobody really has total control, no, no one person in the process. So I think that I, I sort of jumped in with both feet understanding that it was going to be a different experience. And as an author, I had a really good experience. I was very involved, you know, just the fact that I spent half the shoot for each movie on the set is very different than a typical author's experience. So I had a lot of input. Control is probably not the word I'd use, but I had a lot of input. Um, and of course, Hunger Games, Twilight, lots of teen books uh, being made in, into movies. Is that really gonna be the norm now? or? I think that people have found that there's this gold mine in, in pre-teen or teen entertainment. Obviously, Hunger Games and Twilight are, are very big franchises. And, and uh, you know, so I think that I'm at the lower end of that. But still, when you walk into a bookstore, I hear that a lot of times that the, the most successful section of the bookstore is the kids section. 
So I feel really privileged to be a part of that section and to be uh, reaching a lot of kids. Well, it's also important because uh, you're finding a way to trick kids uh, <laughs> into reading and having fun without realizing that they're actually right. getting smarter in the process. Well, I think that, that it's, it's <laughs> true of, of adults as it is of kids, is that kids like to read for entertainment. They like to read for fun. And so by giving them something that they can sink their teeth into, I think that helps them take their next step into sort of more legitimate reading, if you will. At what point did you see that this was definitely going to become a movie? It happened pretty early on. Uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, my second book, Roderick Rules, came out. And while I was on a book tour, I was getting offers from different movie studios. And so I had to uh, sort of field that while I was trying to do these, you know, these midnight uh, book signings and, and waking up the next day at 5 in the morning. Uh, so it was kind of a stressful time, but very exciting at the same time. Is that the hardest part about your job, uh, balancing all of this? You have a successful career in games, you have a successful career in movies and in books. How do you... I think the hardest part is not cheating my family. That's the most difficult part because, you know, I can, I can balance my jobs, but there's always that time I'm taking away from my own, my own little guys at home. So I'm always trying to find and that how balance. many? Do you have? I have two, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. So they've got to be really, uh, you know, some of your biggest cheerleaders, but also the guys that you actually turn to when you want to bounce ideas off. Yeah, it's funny. My my older son, his name is Will. He sort of skipped right over my books. He went right from, uh, you know, the the uh, Super Diaper Baby books, uh, the Dave Pilkey books, right into uh, into uh, the uh, Percy Jackson series and heavier stuff, the Harry Potter series. My younger son hasn't quite gotten there yet, but we'll see if he skips over my books. Uh, how how long do you expect to keep this series going? Will you jump into another series and create a whole new franchise, or do you see yourself just doing this for the foreseeable future? I think I see myself doing this for the foreseeable future, but I'd like to be something more than a one property creator. I'd like to create you know, multiple storylines, multiple franchises, but I don't know if that's in the cards. You know, sometimes a person like me has a good idea, a hit, and then they try and, and, and don't have success in the future. So I think I would like to give it a try, but maybe I am just a one property person. Will, uh, you do movies for all of the books? I don't think that we'll do uh, a movie per book, like very uh, rigidly like that. I think that um, we've broken the seal a little bit by mixing the third and fourth books together. So, so we'll see. I think we'll always be taking bits and pieces from the books if we continue doing movies. Okay. And which book will be made into a movie next, do you think? I'd really like to make a holiday special for television that's animated. Uh, the trouble with these actors who are in middle school is that they grow very quickly and they change very quickly. Um, so I'd really like to work in a medium where the character isn't going to uh, to grow six inches between uh, <laughs> takes. So. Is that something you talked about before? Yeah, it's really shocking. Uh, you know, when we brought Zach Gordon on board, for example, you know, he looked really young for the part. He looked too young for the part, and now he looks, you know, he looks like an eighth grader. He looks his age, but that's uh, that's getting up at the upper end. Uh, of the age uh, limit, but he's, uh, you know, there. what I really like about these movies is that even though the kids are getting a little bit older, there's a real innocence to them. There's an innocence to the stories. Uh, they're very pure childhood stories. And that's got to be really great for the parents as well. Right, it is. Yeah, I think that a lot of times parents come out of these movies enjoying them just as much as kids, and it's great. We're creating something that's sort of anachronistic as family comedies that are not computer generated or in 3D, they're just, you know, they're, the, the roles are played by human beings, actors, and that's actually something that's kind of special in this realm right now. Well, you've certainly hit on something special. Uh, really good job, Jeff Kenny. Thank we you very much. forward to the movie and the future movies and books uh, as you continue to roll them out. I appreciate it. And with Jeff Kenny, I'm Lee Hawkins. We'll see you next time. Thank you.